Okay, welcome back to the Tech Talk studio. We're here with Paul Fixie. He's the CEO of Farnstein Security, and I can say he's a real DNS expert. A lot of requests for change are written by you. Um, today, the title of your presentation is Defective by Design, how the Internet's openness is slowly poisoning us. That sounds quite ominous. Is, is the openness of the Internet poisoning us? In a sense. Um, right now, the Internet is a pretty much a free-for-all. Anybody can send anything, anybody can connect to anything, and if a lot of it is garbage, then that garbage is carried just as well as non-garbage, and it becomes a problem for somebody at the far end. Okay, you can compare it to an open sewer. <laughs> you could compare it to an open sewer, but I don't know if I'd go quite that far. Okay, but so you're pleading to close things off or to structure things, to organize things in another way? What can we do? Well, we can close some things off. Uh, we exactly. have a big problem with IP source addresses. It's an mm -hmm. obscure technical point, but it turns out that I can, from the privacy of my house, send a stream of packets claiming to be from you that will incite some powerful servers on the internet to answer you because they think the request mm -hmm. came from you, which okay. is bad for you if there are millions of these requests. Yeah. So that is something we could do. We could absolutely work through maybe some regulation or treaty to fix it so that if yeah. somebody was not properly cleaning up their IP source addresses before they left the network, they would not be able to connect to other networks. Yeah. Uh, could one step be that we just uh, eliminate the who is directory? Eliminating who is <laughs> would be a completely unrelated idea and a bad one. Okay, very um, good. What is a good idea? Well, so more on the point of who is. We currently have a real accountability problem on the internet, right? People mm. who get these identifiers, whether it's a domain name, IP address, you know, some global identifier, which is that allocation is then respected by the rest of the internet community. Mm. And yet, the person to whom that allocation has been made, let's say you, would be allowed to hide your identity so that no matter what crime or abuse you commit using the global identifiers that have been allocated to you, no one can sue you, no one can even find out who you are. Mm. I think that's a problem. But we have DNSSEC, right? Mm -hmm. uh, DNSSEC uh, is an idea we've been working on now, I think, 18 years. Uh, it took 16 years to stop tinkering with it, and about two years now to realize that there's not a lot of incentive. People don't want to turn it on because no one else has yet turned it on. So we're having a chicken or egg problem. Mm. Uh, but let me tell you, it'll be a great world when we find a way to get everybody to turn on DNSSEC. Okay, well here in the Netherlands, we got about five million uh, internet addresses, but one million are DNSSEC now. And that's probably also because SCDN is mainly developing. It. So are we ahead then in the Netherlands? Um, you are ahead, so is Sweden. The, uh, the Nordic countries have really banded together um, and they've done some interesting work where sometimes domains get signed without necessarily the registrant even knowing that that's been done. Of course, mm -hmm. the registr registrant can also recover the key and use it, you know, it, for real DNSSEC, but somehow to break stiction, what we've done in some of these registries is to create a lot of keys and just hold them in escrow, waiting for the registrant to then ask for their own key. Mm. And that was the only way to get millions of domains signed, because I promise you, in the Netherlands, there are not millions of domain owners who care about DNSSEC mm. yet. Okay. Again, another solution, IP version 6. Why is it taking so long? Uh, it's the same, solu same problem as with DNSSEC. Uh, if you turn on IP version 6, and uh, let's say it's still now, the early years, there won't be a lot of other people for you to talk to. Yeah. And the technology is still pretty raw. Yeah. So you will incur some cost, and maybe you'll get some benefit of some early training, but you will ultimately be on a very small network unless you also still have IP version 4. Yeah. So yeah. we are years away from a time that you can run an IP version 6 only a uh, laptop, for example, and still feel like you're connected to the internet. Mm. And what that means is that everybody would like everybody else to go first. Okay, yes. The chicken and egg again. The chicken and egg again. Uh, Paul, I'm out of solutions. What can we do about the openness of the internet? Or nothing? Is it slowly poisoning us? What can we do? I think 
I'm here to promote awareness of these problems. I think if more people are aware of how crazy the edge of the internet is, they might be willing to invest a little bit more in everything from patching their laptop software to turning off Java to perhaps uh, mentioning to their elected representatives that they would like to see a little bit more internet protection at the edges. Um, I can tell you that there are countries in the world where theft of internet related money and you know wealth from, from the Western world is a major source of gross domestic product. Mm. And I think what we're go ultimately going to have to do is um, isolate some of those countries. Okay, so put a digital border around a certain country because too much bad stuff is coming out of it. It's not, not that it's too much bad stuff, it's that it's too much state-sponsored bad stuff. Ah, yes. Um, some of these countries are closing themselves off from the internet. Are we going towards a sort of balkanization, a sort of splinternet that we're going to a future where we don't have one open internet but several networks? We've always had that. I don't think we're going to go toward balkanization in the sense that uh, there will be parts of the internet that are cut off completely from everybody. Uh, but you're going to see more and more national firewalls. You're going to see more and more reputation systems. I can tell you that because it is so easy to get a domain name or an IP address right now, that there is a vibrant industry. In fact, in this building, this well-represented, vibrant industry of, of reputation providers who do nothing except to uh, globally poison all of the identifiers that are being mm. used for abuse and crime yeah. in order to reduce the reachable part of the internet to the part that should have been granted in the first place. This seems mm. like a long way to go to have the internet we should have, but right now we build it and then we tear 80% of it down. Okay, yeah, so. Okay, um, you just arrived. Uh, what are your expectations uh, for the outcome of this conference? Uh, what are your hopes and biggest fears? Um, this is my first time at NCSC. I was at govcert.nl, um, which is a previous version of this. And I think what I'm seeing in the hallways this time is a lot more seriousness. We're seeing that the, the government and industry has really woken up since the last time I was here. Okay. And they're paying very close attention to this. Maybe it's because it has the word cyber in it, but maybe it's because Finally, the internet and uh, what I call meat space are merging, yes. and there's no way to be part of one without taking the other seriously. Okay, very good. Um, this is a way to broadcast content of the audience to uh, a broader audience uh, around the world. Everybody can see it on YouTube. Uh, what, are your, uh, what is your message to the people now watching at home? Hmm. Concerning cybersecurity, of course. You could also tell personal stories, but concerning cyber cybersecurity. <laughs> I think I won't tell stories. Um, so, in 2008, there was a very bad cyber security event called Configure. Um, Configure. Configure, yes. And uh, I was part of the incident response team, and so I studied it. I uh, studied the worm, I studied the code, I studied a lot of the technology. Um, one of the things that the, this worm did was to try to infect other computers. You know, it was a, basically a Windows PC and laptop style virus, but it would try to infect other computers as well. And it did this by modifying your USB sticks. Every USB key you would put mm. into an infected machine would then get infected. Yeah. Okay, the infection was perverse. It would create an icon that was an icon of a floppy disk or an icon of a USB okay. thing, and that icon was actually a program. And because of the strange it. way that we do our, our user interface on not just Windows, but Mac and iOS, Android, they all do this. If, if the user clicks on something, then the operating system believes that the user has given permission for that to be run. Yeah. And the user didn't know that they were clicking on something that was an executable program. They thought they were opening a folder. Mm. So my message for everybody is you need to be aware of how terrible this technology is. Yes. It is not protecting you. It is, no. um, it's not trying to hurt you, but it will hurt you a lot if you don't treat it as the danger that it is. Okay. So um, I always tell people that they should keep their systems patched up to the limit, uh, up to the absolute uh, latest patch level. That means if you're running Windows XP, you should throw that computer away buy another one, or maybe you reuse it, install Linux on it, do something fun with it. Uh, it means you should probably disable Java on your PCs and your Macintoshes. 
because there's been nothing but trouble from, the, from, from that code base. Um, and it just really, I would like people around the world to know that this is not the safe version of, uh, of the future that they may have seen in Star Trek. No. Uh, this is the dirty, ugly version of the future that um, uh, they, they need to prepare themselves they, they need, yes. and they need to protect themselves. Okay. Everything is a bad neighborhood now. And we're here at the conference and we won't be using USB sticks to upload our presentations, right? Ha! No. <laughs> uh, Conficker is long dead, but uh, we're a lot more careful now about USB sticks yeah. than we were. Fortunately. Thank you very much. Pull fixing. Thank you.